What is up, Dynasty community? It is about time that we dive into some actual rookie mocks. And just like last year, I'm going to be running through actual mock drafts using teams that you guys submitted to me, your rosters, your draft picks, your leagues. I'm going to be drafting as if I were you to try to help you guys out and give you guys as much possible advice as I possibly can to improve your rosters from your rookie drafts this year. For the first video, I'm going to be drafting as if I was Rob. So Rob, thank you so much for giving me your team and your draft picks down in the comments below. For everybody out there, this is a 12 team super flex, pretty standard, just your normal one quarterback, one super flex, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end and two flex spots as your starting position. This draft starts on May 7th, so just the day after this video releases on Saturday. So good luck to you, Rob. Uh, but let's take a look real quick at the team that he has because it's pretty solid for a super flex. I mean, at quarterback, he's got Kyler Murray and Derek Carr. He's got Christian McCaffrey, then just kind of like a bunch of backup running backs. Rashad Penny's in there, but then a bunch of backup running backs. Then you got DK Metcalf, Deontay Johnson, Allen Robinson, Juju Smith-Schuster, Rashad Bateman, Kenny Galladay, Alan Lazard, and then some other backup wide receivers. And then at tight end, he's got TJ Hawkinson, Evan Ingram, and then the shots on Harrison Bryant and Blake Darwin. So overall, it's a pretty solid roster, and it's only going to get better because Rob has four first-round picks this year and the 2.06 as well. So as good as this roster already is, we can make it that much better to help try to get you to be a contending and hopefully a championship-winning team in 2022, Rob. So let's switch over to the mock drafts here and see what we've got going on. So I'm using fantasymocks.com and what is also a really cool part of this feature and this site is that you can actually pick and choose the draft picks that you want to use. You don't have to pick one slot. You can actually move all around the board, just highlight where you want. You know, if you want the 303, 304, 305, you can click on all of those and you're gonna be able to draft them in this mock draft against the computer. Uh, I talked to Andy Estridge, shout out Andy, the creator of this site. So the ADP is also more tuned in to what happened post-draft. Uh, so this is also a little bit more accurate as well to what you're actually gonna see in your rookie mock drafts. And I think we should just get things going here. I think we should just see what happens and see what we can do for you, Rob. So our first pick is at the 1.03. Brees Hall, Traylon Burks, those are the first two picks off the board here. So I think that makes it a pretty easy decision here at the 1.03. Probably the most ideal situation is that you end up getting Kenneth Walker at the 1.03. We saw that your wide receiver group was pretty solid. Your quarterback group also really solid as well. Uh, it was just that running back group because you only had Christian McCaffrey and Rashad Penny where your RBs one and two. And that could be fantastic if Christian McCaffrey stays healthy and if Rashad Penny kind of holds back Kenneth Walker a little bit. But I think adding Walker in, it gives yourself some longevity past potentially Rashad Penny not signing with the Seattle Seahawks next year and Kenneth Walker is the dude or it at least gives you a little bit of injury buffer as well if Rashad Penny were to get hurt again you have the next man up in the Seattle backfield and my RB2 in this class of fantastic running back in Kenneth Walker so I think that's the most ideal situation for you is to get Kenneth Walker at the 1.03 maybe if you don't really feel like you're gonna get him maybe you try to move up to 102 and solidify yourself one of these running backs or I mean just go straight up to 1.01 and get Brees Hall that might be even better but I think ideally you want Kenneth Walker at the 1.03 with your first pick in the first round so here at the 1.05 it's a wide receiver it's pretty easily a wide receiver it's just the question of which wide receiver is it to me in my rankings it would go Drake London then Traylon Burks and then Garrett Wilson so whichever of the best of those is available is the person that I'm going to take in that order so London and Burks are already gone so for me, it's Garrett Wilson here. Uh, he's my pretty clear cut wide receiver three in this class. Maybe you don't really like the New York Jets landing spot, but I at least have faith in the direction that the Jets are going, or at least the direction that they want to head in. It's really just a matter of is Zach Wilson the guy or not? And if he is, then I think he can more than definitely support Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore as wide receivers. Honestly, you could probably make the argument that Garrett Wilson is better than Elijah Moore, or at least more of an alpha wide receiver one than Moore is. So those targets and those high upside fantasy targets would go to Garrett Wilson on the outside versus Elijah Moore as more of a slot player. So I like Garrett Wilson there at the 1.05 to add to your stable of wide receivers that you already have. And here at the 1.09 and at the 110 as well, you could probably talk yourself into two more of those such wide receivers. This is a very wide receiver heavy first round class. So if you're not at the top to get a running back in Hall or Walker, you're not really in on Kenny Pickett. And the back end is a little bit too early, I think, for some of the other running backs in this class. 
you're most likely just taking a wide receiver or you're trading out for some other situation, either kicking the can down to next year if you can, or trade out for an actual veteran player, maybe somebody that you like a little bit more. So here, 1.09, 110, like I said, we're taking a wide receiver. Uh, to me, ah, man, it's really hard to pass on Christian Watson. Like, I want to pass on Christian Watson. I think he's a landmine. I see the upside with the Packers, with Aaron Rodgers, but I just do not like Christian Watson, the prospect. And that's, you know, the, the kind of balance and the internal struggle that I'm having with Christian Watson. I think because you have nine and 10, I'm taking Jahan Dodson. I'm taking the first round wide receiver and the draft capital that he got with the Washington Commanders. That's one of my picks right there. The other one, I think it's got to be Chris Olave. I just didn't even realize that he was still there. So I'll take both first round wide receivers. If you want to take Christian Watson, I'm not necessarily going to argue with you because you do have a fantastic wide receiver stable already and a great core that if you want to take the shot on Christian Watson and the upside of what he could potentially become as you know a wide receiver one in fantasy football and the downside is you never start him and he's cuttable in a couple years with the wide receivers that you have already on your roster i think that that is a good bet and that's a good you know use of your first round pick if you don't want to go for players like Jahan dodson and chris olave who could definitely have a better chance of hitting than christian watson but their hit is not as high as christian watson's hit if that makes sense to you so if you want to take the upside shot on watson i'm there for it i just have dodson and chris olave ahead in my ranking so I'm just going to take both those guys. So we're up again at the 2.06. You can see all the players that went ahead of us the first five picks in the second round between Bell, Cook, Pickens, Matt Corral, and Damian Pierce. Right here, according to ADP, at least you're looking at guys like Trey McBride as the tight end one. You got Rashad White and Zamir White, Brian Robinson. You know, that's the tier of running backs that you're most likely looking at if Pierce and Cook and Spiller are gone. Uh, all three of those guys I would probably take at this pick anyway if they were there. So it makes sense that they're not there. Uh, the wide receivers that you're looking at are John Mechie, Alec Pierce, Wandale Robinson, all these round two guys. You got Jalen Tolbert down here, Tyquan Thornton. We're getting a little too low at the wide receiver position. This is where the second round I've been saying like all like draft season is going to be really, really weird that the drop off in talent in super flex leagues is probably right at like the 112 to where the second round is a massive tier gap. And then within the second round itself, it also has more tier gaps as players like David Bell and Pickens and Damian Pierce kind of fall off the board and get taken early in the second round. The second round is just kind of a crapshoot and you can kind of throw ADP out the window at this point. Just go get your guy. Don't worry about trading back and you know hoping that your guy is still there at the 209, the 210, 301. Just take your guy here at the 2.06 and beyond because it's really just a crapshoot. It's who, whoever you want at this point. There are no real consensus rankings for how this goes. So that's my little theoretical spill on the second round here. Rob, if I were you at the 2.06 and this was how the draft board looked, I would take Rashad White here uh, because I think that he could be a really good RB2 and a pass catching RB2 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers behind Leonard Fournette. We know that Leonard Fournette also has the ability to get hurt and miss some games here and there, which made, I think, Ronald Jones kind of at least starter worthy for a couple of weeks in the last couple of years. So if you get that opportunity with Rashad White, then you definitely have a player who arguably is better than Ronald Jones, especially in the passing game as well. So you have that upside uh, and just a player that you're going to be able to throw into your roster as a flex player, even if Leonard Fournette is there. But then if Leonard Fournette gets hurt, Rashad White is going to be a very highly valuable player. So I like taking the shot on Rashad White there over any of the other running backs that are available also or any of the other kind of wide receivers at this point. You might be able to talk yourself into Wandale Robinson or John Mechie or Alec Pierce as round two guys, but we already drafted three in the first round. So I don't really think you need to take any more shots on wide receivers, especially with the receivers that you have already. So just filling out the back end of those running backs and giving yourself as many shots for starter worthy players with the running back group that you already have, I think is probably the best usage of your draft picks in this class that aren't the kind of three first round picks after your 1.03. So we're up again at the 4.8 and just kind of the same thing right here. I know 4.08 is a little rough because at that point, you know, you're past the Keontae Ingram, Tyrion Davis Price, even Hassan Haskins, all guys that I really, really like as late round flyers. You're past the point of all of them. So this is kind of a rough pick uh, if you were to take this shot, I would still take Jerome Ford personally. You might 
be able to talk yourself into Kyron Williams or Tyler Beatty or Kevin Harris. Uh, but I would just probably just take Jerome Ford because I think that he's the best player available that's left, the best running back available. And we've seen that Dearness Johnson had the ability to have starter worthy, not I mean, not even starter worthy, like RB1 worthy weeks whenever Nick Chubb missed last year. And I know Nick Chubb is kind of a very healthy running back, but even if he were to miss one or two games and you had the ability to throw Jerome Ford in there as your starting running back, I, that's definitely worth the 4.08 to me. Just to, you know, one or two of those games to potentially buy you a flex or RB2 start and to help you potentially even buy a win. I'm paying the fourth round pick for that and I'm drafting Jerome Ford at that 4.08. I mean, if any of the other running backs are there, like I said, Hassan Haskins, Tyrion Davis Price, if any of them are there, I'll take all of them over Jerome Ford for sure. I would even take Sam Howell over Jerome Ford. Uh, but that, I think at that point, when you're staring down that draft pick and the players that are on the board at that point, it's probably going to end up being Jerome Ford. So that's a look into how I would be drafting if I was drafting in your specific league with these specific picks, Rob. I would be taking Kenneth Walker at the 103 if he's there. The best wide receiver available in this case, it was Garrett Wilson at the 1.05. Shots on wide receivers at 109 and 110. Here I took Dotson and Alave, but we talked about if you wanted to take the upside shot on Christian Watson because you can kind of afford it, then I would definitely be on board with that as well. Rashad White, the 2.06, and then the potential and the possibility that if Nick Chubb were to get hurt and you could throw Jerome Ford into your running back position as a starter and for however many weeks that is, that's worth it to me at the 4.08. So those were the six players that I have you taking out of this draft. Hopefully that helps you out in your rookie draft tomorrow. Hopefully you're watching this today or before the rookie draft on the actual draft day on Saturday. To everybody else, I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into what I'm trying to think about in my rookie picks when giving a little bit more context with specific rosters, draft picks, league formats, all of that kind of stuff. So hopefully you're able to garner a little bit out from this video as well, even if it didn't directly apply to you or your rookie draft or your league. With that said, if you like the possibility of me doing a video for your league and with your draft picks, leave a comment down below telling me what draft picks you have, a rundown of your roster, if it's super flex or one quarterback, any other pertinent information I need to know, and then definitely when your rookie draft is so I can get back to you either by making a video or replying to you in the comments before your rookie draft to actually give you some advice that will help you out before you actually go into your draft. So leave all that down below. I won't pick everybody, but I will respond to as many or all of them, as many as I can for sure down in the comments to help you guys out. And with that all being said, thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch y'all later.